In this video, we're going to go for galvanic cells or voltaic cells. Okay, so galvanic cells and voltaic cells are two names for the same thing. It is essentially a system that uses a spontaneous redox reaction to generate current. So essentially, this is a system that turns chemical energy into electrical energy. All right. So the concept behind a galvanic cell is that, as we've discussed in redox reaction, a spontaneous redox reaction will involve the transfer of electrons from one species to another. If you simply separate the two species and connect them by a metal wire that is capable of conducting electricity, then electrons will still flow from one species to the other. But since you're able to get electrons to travel through the wire, you're able to produce current, which can be used to power electrical devices. Okay, so to take in a look at an example of a galvanic cell, we're going to look at this reaction right here, which we've looked at earlier, where copper cation combines with zinc solid to form copper solid and zinc cations with a positive standard cell potential. And this is required because we're looking at a spontaneous redox reaction. So it has to have a positive cell potential. Now, the way this is set up is with two half cells. So essentially, this is one half cell, this is the other half cell that are connected by a wire, as well as what we'll discuss later, a salt bridge. So the way this is set up is that there are two electrodes. The electrodes are essentially just blocks of metal. And one of these electrodes is going to be zinc, so a block of zinc metal. And the other one is going to be copper, a block of copper metal. These electrodes are sitting in solutions with their corresponding cations. So that means here we're going to have one molar zinc sulfate. And zinc sulfate is going to be able to dissolve in solution, so that means floating around in solution, we do have zinc cations. The same is true on the copper side. You're going to have copper cations in solution, and that's because this solution is going to have a copper sulfate solution. Okay, so now if we take a look at this reaction, what we know is that the copper is going to get reduced, it's going to gain electrons to form copper solid, and the zinc is going to get oxidized to form the zinc cation. So that means over here on the zinc side, if we wanted to write the half reaction, the half reaction would be zinc is getting oxidized to form Zn2 plus and two electrons. And if we think about chemically what's happening here, well, that means the solid zinc metal is getting oxidized into zinc cations in solution. So here, as this process occurs, the zinc metal is basically going to gradually degrade and it's going to get smaller as the zinc metal gets dissolved as zinc cations. So we often say here that the zinc electrode undergoes pitting. So pitting is the idea that as the zinc gets oxidized, you're going to start to form pits in the zinc electrode where that zinc metal has dissolved into zinc cations. Now, once we get the zinc oxidized, we produce electrons. The electrons are going to go ahead and travel through this electrical wire. So we know electrons are traveling from the zinc electrode to the copper electrode. Once the zinc, uh, these electrons produced from zinc get to the copper electrode, there are going to be copper cations in solution that are going to accept those electrons and form solid copper metal. So our half reaction here is copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons gives us solid copper metal. And copper cations are the cations dissolved in solution. When they accept electrons, they form solid copper metal, which will plate on top of the copper electrode. So the copper electrode undergoes what we call electroplating. So electroplating is the idea that electricity is going to be used to plate a layer of metal on top of the copper electrode, which is essentially what's going on here. So we can see the opposite processes in the half cells, in the zinc half cell, the zinc electrode is getting oxidized and it's forming pits as it degrades away. 
the copper electrode is undergoing reduction where copper electrons are plating on top of the copper electrode. So the copper electrode is going to get bigger. And the next thing we can do is these two are electrodes and we have special names for the electrodes, anode and cathode. And here, the zinc electrode is called the anode. And the reason why it's called the anode is because it is the site of oxidation. So that would, of course, make the copper electrode the cathode, and that's because it is the site of reduction. And you might have heard this before, the mnemonic, an ox red cat. Oxidation occurs at the anode, reduction occurs at the cathode. Okay, so the next thing you need to know is, as we can see, electrons are traveling from the anode to the cathode. What you need to know are the charges of the anode and the charges of the cathode. And a helpful way to remember this is that galvanic slash voltaic cells are a spontaneous process. So electrons are moving spontaneously from the anode to the cathode. So since this is a spontaneous process, you have to think, what do electrons want to move spontaneously towards? Well, they want to move spontaneously towards a positive charge and move spontaneously away from a negative charge. So here, the anode is going to have a negative charge forcing electrons away towards the positive cathode that the electrons are attracted to. Okay, so the next thing to think about then is, well, if you think about these processes of oxidation and reduction, what is happening to the charge in both half cells? And in the zinc electrode, you're producing a bunch of zinc cations, which is building up positive charge. In the copper electrode, you're using up your copper electrons to plate them as copper metal, so you're losing positive charge. So that means our zinc solution is becoming more and more positive, which is the opposite of what we say it should be. It's supposed to be negative. And our copper solution is becoming more and more negative, which again is the opposite of what we said it should be, positive. So in reality, if all you have is what we've discussed so far, then your circuit would run for a little bit, produce a little current, and then it would stop. So that, of course, is not what we want. We want our circuit to be able to produce a lot of current from our uh, re spontaneous redox reaction. So that's why we also have a salt bridge. So that is this component here in the middle. And the salt bridge should actually not be a surprise because if you recall from physics, in order for you to have current in a circuit, you must have a closed loop for electrons to flow through. And right now, everything is unidirectional. There actually isn't a loop. So we do need a loop which is completed by the salt bridge, allowing the electrons to continually circulate through the circuit. And the salt bridge, it is made of an, uh, an inert salt, so a salt that is not going to participate or disrupt the redox reaction that's going on. So a common salt bridge that is used is something like potassium nitrate, KNO3, which has potassium cations and nitrate anions. And they help to prevent the charge buildup. So let's make a note over here. Salt bridge prevents charge buildup. Okay, so how do they prevent charge buildup? Well, here on the zinc solution, it's becoming too positive. You're forming too many cations. So that means the anions from the salt, the nitrate, are going to go ahead and enter the zinc solution. In our copper solution, it's becoming too negative. So the cations from the salt bridge, the potassium, are going to enter the copper solution. And a very nice way to memorize this is that the anions in the salt bridge go to the anode, and the cations in the salt bridge go to the cathode. And with this, we have a complete circuit, so our circuit is now able to run, producing lots of current. And as the electrons are moving through the wire, they're producing current, and this current can be used to power electrical devices like light bulbs. Okay. So, 
This is how a galvanic cell or a voltaic cell works.